we fix the legal immigration system so it's uh, more efficient, uh, if we uh, are you know, attracting young people who may have studied here uh, to stay here and uh, create jobs here, uh, that that all is going to be good for the economy. It's going to reduce the deficit. Um, it might have forestalled some of the problems that we're seeing now in the Rio Grande Valley uh, and with these unaccompanied children. Uh, and so we have a bipartisan uh, bill, Wendell, bipartisan agreement supported by everybody from labor to the evangelical community to law enforcement. So the argument isn't between me and the House Republicans. It's between the House Republicans and the Senate Republicans. When we think about the current immigration crisis and the call for protection of our borders, naturally we think about the line drawn between Mexico and places like Texas, Arizona, and California. But because of what is happening at the present time with regard to illegal immigrants being shipped to points in every state in the nation, we are now in the minds of some a country of border states where every state is a border to be protected and every citizen of every state needs to consider the fallout. Welcome to Midpoint as we go around the dial. The morning host on WIBC Radio in Indianapolis and one who wrote about these secret border states, Tony Katz joins us today in Midpoint. Tony, thanks for being here. A pleasure. How are you doing? Excellent, Tony. Let me start out with what you wrote for townhall.com, and this is the first paragraph. I can only imagine how this was taken and the reaction you got. Indiana's been forced to accept 245 illegal invaders without a vote or knowledge of who they are, where they come from, nor what diseases they may carry, without knowledge of whether they, here illegally, were placed with other people known as sponsors that are here illegally, without knowledge of what the cost will be to care for them, nor how much the taxpayers of Indiana will be forced to pay, or else be called racist, bigots, and xenophobes. After writing that, were you called a racist, bigot, and or xenophobe? I don't have to write anything to be called a racist, a bigot, or a xenophobe. All I have to do is exist and not agree with President Obama. And it's, it, it comes as a very big shock to people when you talk about illegal invaders. And it's, in a way, no way to talk about children, but it must go to the bigger story, which is Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution matters, that the government will protect the states from invasion, and the much bigger story, which is every state is now a border state. Tennessee is having people dropped in their state. Indiana, people dropped in their state, unbeknownst to the governor, unbeknownst to state legislatures, le legislators and legislatures. Brent Steele, a, con uh, a state senator here in Indiana, was stunned to find out that they're being dropped here, couldn't get a single bit of information, and was as furious as can be, and rightfully so, because we don't know the histories of not only these children, we don't know the histories of the sponsors that are the, they're being placed with. We're not told whether or not the sponsors are here legally. We're not told what the economic situation is of the sponsors. Do we really want a situation where we don't know whether children are going to places that can't actually care for them if that is indeed the priority? So it is problem on top of problem. And the real humanitarian crisis here is what about the people of Indiana? Don't they have a right to say, wait a second, who are these kids? The people in Marietta, California, who got so savagely attacked by the press and others for stopping the buses, they were standing up for their kids to ensure they know what's happening on their streets and their schools to their children when you just drop them, when you just drop other kids into the neighborhood. This isn't about not caring for children. This is about Americans caring for their children, and then we can work on everybody else. Is it simply a matter of, in your mind, that the children, when we talk about it, it is the children, it is the children, that that is the word that keeps being hammered into people's minds here, and that is what the media then, in your opinion, is using as part of this attack against what's happening here and in favor of the president's policies? Well, it's, it's meant to blind people from the bigger subject. It is used as a cudgel against the American people, and I find that horrific. If we're going to really engage the humanitarian conversation, we need to engage the fact that Americans have rights, and we should be honest and open and talking about that. But the administration's failures uh, is not, by the way, it, it just in the small box. We can go back through a, quite a few presidents and talk about the failures of immigration policy and failures on border security. This is something different. We can talk about DACA. We can talk about this magnet that's pulling people through. And we can discuss that people like Governor Perry have clearly said, we must do something. Here's an idea. President Obama laughed him 
out of the room. And now you have governors like Mike Pence who discovered that 245 people were now put into his state in news reports. Well, we used to laugh when President Obama said he would learn about something by watching it on the news. Thank goodness he's the last viewer CNN has. Uh, but now we have governors who don't know things are happening. They don't know things are being dropped in their states. According to the rules, they only have to be advised if there's going to be a detention facility set up in their state. So this is very, very dangerous stuff up and down the line. It is certainly a failure of leadership from President Obama, but we really have to talk about we the people who we've been voting for and holding the feet to the fire of politicos who claim to want to do something about the border and border security, yet do nothing year after year and election after election. Got about 90 seconds left here. Let's get to it. Governor Mike Pence of Indiana, 245 unaccompanied children from January 1 through July 7 of 2014. What's happening now? We don't know. That's the frightening, scary part. We simply don't know. We don't know where they were placed. We don't know who they are. We don't know how many boys and how many girls. We don't know if any of them were sick. We don't know if any of them have any other relations here in Indiana or any place else. And I take it the governor we, has I, asked. Uh, as far as I know, the governor has looked into it. The governor has questioned why this is happening. But I don't think the federal government has to share the information with him. I'd like to see Governor Pence much more focused and much more vocal on the subject, if I'm being asked. I'm going to go off topic here for one second and a last shot, because as a talk radio host, I know that you can pretty much talk about anything. Is CNN International Poll, ORC International Poll recently, who would win if a presidential election between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney were held today? Of course, it's not going to happen. It's all just one of these grand things that we talk about to see what people are saying. 53% Romney, 44% Barack Obama. 30 seconds. Would it be a good idea for Republicans to bring back Rip, uh, Mitt Romney? If I ran Roddy Rowdy, Rowdy Roddy Piper, the former wrestler, against President Obama today, he'd be president. Let's not pay attention to nonsense balls. Let's win the Senate. All things are possible if you win the Senate. 2016 should be a distant thought for everybody. I'm just curious. I mean, isn't Rowdy Roddy no longer with us? I'm just, I, I have to remember my wrestling. Is he still with I us? Think, I think he is still alive. I and even if he has passed, God bless him, and he'd still win. <laughs> I was going to say, if he was dead, I figured that you'd go ahead and still fall on that side because that probably would be what would happen, too. I'll take him. I'll take Jimmy <laughs> Snuka. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, heck, Bob Backlund, I'll bring him back to the good side. Anything we got to do. If you take Andre the Giant, then we're all done. Hey, Tony Katz from WIBC He's Radio French, in Indianapolis. Count. Thanks a lot, buddy. We'll do it again, I promise. See you later. You got all it. right, next hour here on Midpoint, the fallout from Fast and Furious isn't over by a long shot. And maybe some more wrestling, too, as Midpoint continues here on the Newsmax TV network.